Hello, welcome back. This is Mr. Bulby. We are studying the Grade 3 Domain 2 classification of animals. This is Lesson 4. Fish, fins, and gills. Let's get going. All right, here we have our five groups listed off in a nice, fun little way to remember them. All my best friends represent vertebrates. The beginning of each of those words, all my best friends represent, are the five animal groups. Amphibians, mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and of course, V for vertebrate. The sixth letter and the words help us make a memory aid to help make sense of the names and the bigger group of the five belong to is of course, the vertebrate group. Very good. So I'll ask you, who can tell me two of the physical characteristics scientists use to classify animals? And then you will ask me or answer about cold-blooded versus warm-blooded and vertebrate and invertebrate, which of course you can share about that in the comments or in class. Very good. Even though a lot of animals we see and think about and talk about are vertebrates, they're, they are only a tiny percent of the animal population on Earth and far outnumber. They're far outnumbered by many types of invertebrates, which don't worry, we will talk plenty about invertebrates. Okay, let's do some inferring from clues. That's what scientists do. We make inferences from clues. Today, you will hear more about one of the groups of animals. And of course, if you remember the title of this domain, you already know what we're going to talk about. But we're going to see if you can get it just from these clues anyway. <laughs> I'm going to give you clues and you can predict which group it'll be. Hmm, I am a cold-blooded member of the animal kingdom. I am a vertebrate. That narrows it down, right? <laughs> I am found swimming in fresh water or salt water. I move around using my fins and I breathe oxygen through my gills underwater. Run, Nemo, run! Sorry, <clears throat> can't resist that. If I don't swim away fast enough from humans and they pick me up, they will feel the hard scales that cover my body and they may even eat me. Oh dear, that would be bad. I don't eat fish, so I couldn't imagine why. Anyway, good job. <laughs> okay, it's very important that we get some vocabulary ahead of time before we start reading the, the lesson or the, um, the read aloud. Now, the words aquatic, having to do with water, fertilizes, makes ready for development, gills, the organs that fish use to breathe in oxygen, the breathe the oxygen in the water. Good. Lungs, the breathing organs of vertebrates that breathe oxygen. Respiratory, having to do with the act of breathing. You'll learn the word, you'll hear the word respiratory again when we talk about respiratory systems in our human body domain later. Scales, the many small hard plates that cover the skin of most types of fish. Spawn, to deposit eggs into the water, which become fertilized or ready for development. So that's all pretty cool. So these words are important for you to remember. They will help you as we continue to read. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm back after a delightful rest. Today, I'm going to tell you more about my friend, Paulo Parada, and the group to which he belongs. So far, you've learned that scientists classify living things by common characteristics in order to study them and show relationships. You have learned about cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. Who remembers if Paulo is cold-blooded or warm-blooded, and can you explain what that means? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, bravo. Right. Paulo Piranha's internal body temperature varies with his surroundings. When Paulo is swimming in warm water, 
his body temperature is higher than when he is swimming in cold water. His body temperature is not constant. He makes adjustments to the surrounding temperature easily. Hmm. That word in the top right corner of this, sli of this slide is animalia. It's Latin for animal. Okay. Who remembers another way scientists classify animals? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with bones. Right. Some animals have backbones. What's another word for animals with backbones? Yes, animals with backbones are called vertebrates, and those without backbones are called... Good job. Invertebrate would be the answer. Very good. Polo is one of many kinds of animals capable of swimming. Having a strong backbone is one type of body design that helps Paolo and the other fish to be good swimmers. You have also learned a little bit about taxonomy, the science of classification. Fish are members of Animalia, or the animal kingdom, just like you and me, but if they belong to a different animal group. You are a mammal like Hilda the hippo and myself. Ebenezer is a bird. Apollo is a fish. Fish are vertebrates, and they are cold-blooded. There are many different types and sizes of fish, represented by many species. Today, I'm going to teach you a little more about aquatic species of animals that are classified as fish. So, to say that in three words, fish are aquatic. They don't live on land, they live in water. All species of fish are aquatic. I just hear someone say Aquaman. Good job. Aquaman, of course, is the DC superhero that is the ruler of the ocean. Very good. All right, moving on. Ah, this beautiful picture of our Earth. And look at all of those fish. All of that blue represents water. And the green represents land. Now, obviously, there is a lot more land than water. Fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Let's take a look at my slide that shows a view of planet Earth from space. There is a lot more water than land. Nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Three quarters! That's a lot. <laughs> Fish are swimming about in Earth's waters, from ponds and streams to rivers and lakes and oceans. They have adapted to almost every water habitat on Earth, except for some very hot springs and the extremely salty Dead Sea. Aside from these places, fish can live anywhere. It's no wonder that fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Most of those wet, watery fish habitats are salty. Because most of the Earth's water is salt water, if you ever swim in the ocean, you may get a little taste of salty sea. Sharks, cod, and flounder are all saltwater fish. Here's a picture of the Dead Sea. You may remember learning about the Dead Sea from first grade. In a unit, in a, you learned that it's in the area called the Middle East, where Egypt and Israel and Jerusalem and all that stuff. It's out there in the Dead Sea. You can see it on the map in the far right. And that is a beautiful picture of it. I've actually been to Israel and floated on the Dead Sea because the concentration of the salt is so thick. You actually can just float out there like you're on a floaty in a swimming pool, except you're not on a floaty. It's just the water itself carrying you up. It's pretty cool. All right. Freshwater fish live in lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. What do you think freshwater is? Bass and trout are common freshwater fish, and some humans actually find them very tasty. Come to think of it, I find fish quite delicious when I can get my paws on fish scraps. <sighs> Rattenboro, you don't share my, you don't share Mr. Bulby's taste for food, but okay. <laughs> some fish, such as salmon, spend parts of their lives in freshwater rivers and part in the salty seawater. Salmon begin their lives in rivers where they stay for anywhere from six months to three years, depending upon their species. 
Then they make an often dangerous journey out of the sea, facing predators and changing water temperatures along the way. They live in the saltwater ocean for about four years before returning to freshwater rivers to lay their eggs. Their migration often covers, often covers several hundred miles. Seen some of these, they actually have places in the rivers up near Oregon and Washington, and other places where you can find river, um, river dams where they have the water, and you can see the fish swimming through them. It's pretty neat. If you ever get a chance, it's cool. All right, let's stop for a moment to think about different ways taxonomists classify polyp. South American piranha from the Amazon River. That's the Amazon River in that picture on the left. He is cold-blooded, aquatic vertebrate. He's a fish, to be sure. The question is whether he is a saltwater fish or a freshwater fish. Which of these types of water is his home? That's right, a freshwater river. Palo's home is the Amazon River, one of the largest rivers in the world. Piranhas live in the freshwater environments, mostly rivers, so they are classified as freshwater fish. Whoa. <laughs> Sometimes animals are classified by their physical characteristics. Though piranhas do have very sharp teeth, they are not the bloodthirsty carnivores they are always perceived to be, always ready to attack humans. Indeed, members of the red-bellied species of piranha do hunt the meat of other fish in large groups, but that's not all they eat. Most piranhas are omnivores. They have reviewed carnivores and omnivores. You've reviewed carnivores and omnivores earlier in this domain. We talked about omnivores are what eats both um, vegetables, plants, and animal meat as well. Okay? So hopefully you know the difference between the two. That's right. <laughs> There's the answer right there. As omnivores, most piranhas eat both animals and plants, eating seeds and fruit that fall into the water. So they'll eat whatever. Many piranhas also feed on carrion. It's animal, birds, that kind of thing. Animals that have already died. You will continue to hear about different foods that many different animals eat. That will help you describe animals. Later, you will hear about how shape and sizes of animals' teeth give you clues about what they eat. So, you already know several common characteristics of fish, but there are more. Can you think of any others? I'll give you a hint. You know that all animals need to breathe oxygen in order to live. Fish do not have lungs. So we have to wonder how in the world, or in this case, underwater, do they breathe? Look closely at this fish and see if you can spot its breathing machine. The respiratory or breathing organs of a fish are called gills. All fish have gills. They take water in through their mouths and the water passes over their gills. The gills take in the oxygen from the water, allowing them to breathe. You will die quickly if you don't get enough air because you draw oxygen out of the air. But fish will die quickly if they do not have water because their oxygen comes from water. The African lungfish is the only fish I know that has lungs in addition to gills and can survive out of the water. We call this an exception to the rule or a pattern breaker. Before the dry season, when the water dries up and leaves a sun-baked riverbed behind, the lungfish buries itself deep in the mud and builds a cocoon-like sheath around itself, staying there for a year or more until water returns to the river. Okay then, fish breathe with gills and you breathe with lungs. That's one big difference between you and fish. What's another? Think about how you swim, with your arms and legs, of course. Take a close look at the fish. Do you see any arms and legs? Nope. So what helps a fish move through the water? Yes, a fish has fins, all kinds of fins. It has fins on the side of its body for steering, fins at the back for powerful speed, fins at the top and bottom to help keep balance. Fish couldn't begin to move without those wonderfully flat fins and their flexible tails. Have you ever worn flippers? 
flippers are designed to be like fishtails to help people move more quickly through the water. Well, everybody, you've spotted the gills and fins on the fish, but what about the rest of the fish's body? What about the stem? Hey, look at me. There I am, taking a close look at a fish. Skim through my mat, skin, skin, fish skin. I'm taking a close look at fish skin through the magnifying glass. Fish skin is very different from your skin. Fish have scaly skin to help protect them and help them move more easily through the water. These hard overlapping scales are more round and smooth and fish have more than one layer of skin just like you. The scales on fish are small, hard, protective coverings over the true skin that is underneath. It's hard to imagine how many fish live in all the Earth's water today. More than 30,000 species are known, but a vast amount of the world's oceans have yet to be explored. What scientists actually know for certain is like one drop of water in a vast bucket. Scientists discover more and more all the time. Maybe one day you will be one of those scientists who will discover something new. Most fish, such as salmon, goldfish, tuna, and eel, spawn or reproduce in a very unique way. When fish spawn, the mother releases her eggs into the water and the male fertilizes them or makes them complete and able to grow into baby fish. Once these soft eggs are fertilized, they are often buried along the river bottom. Here, they develop and eventually hatch into tiny fish called larvae or larvae. The early form of fish. <laughs> Some sharks, on the other hand, are among the few examples of live bearing fish, almost the opposite of external spawning. The mother shark's eggs develop internally, remaining inside her body until they are born as live young, rather than eggs. If you look closely at this image, you may be able to see the baby shark swimming with his mama. Yep, there it is. The cute little baby shark. Oh, underneath. <laughs> Alrighty. Taxonomists have another way of gripping fish. They have divided all fish into three classes or classifications. Most fish belong to the class called bony fish. These fish have skeletons that are made of hard, bony material. Most of them have a swim bladder, kind of like the eternal floaty, which helps them float rather than so, <laughs> which helps them float. Perhaps you know of some fish that are considered bony fish. Bass, clownfish, minnows, and sunfish are just a few. Another smaller class have some well-known members, as you heard of earlier. Fish, like the shark and stingray, have skeletons made of cartilage. This class of fish has tooth-like scales, and some of them breathe through spiracles, small gill openings on the tops of their heads. The last class of fish is not as familiar to most of us. These fish are jawless and include some interesting members of the hagfish and lamprey. It's cool, isn't it? Very cool. Earth's underwater world, Palo's world, is a fascinating place, much of which has yet to be explored. Perhaps some of you will become scientists and study aquatic creatures like Paulo. Today, we've only talked about fish, but not all sea animals are fish. There are many other vertebrates in the ocean, such as dolphins, sea snakes, and sea turtles. The sea is also home to tens of thousands of species of invertebrates. Animals you may have seen before, such as crabs, clams, sand dollars, and squid. Let's review the characteristics of fish. How many fish characteristics can you name? Give you a minute. Obviously, you can pause. Okay. Here's several. <laughs> Cold-blooded. Vertebrates. Have gills. Scales. And fins. Bony or cartilage skeletons. Live in water. Most lay eggs. Great job. 
Now I'm going to read you some riddles of sea creatures. See if you can identify which ones are fish and which ones are not. I am a jellyfish. My soft body has no bones. I have neither gills nor lungs for breathing. Oxygen moves easily through my thin skin. Sometimes I lay eggs, but I may also give live birth. I am cold-blooded, and I will surely die if I am left out of water. Hmm. Fish? Not fish. Fish? Nope, I'm not a fish. Even though the word is in my name, I'm classified as an invertebrate. <clears throat> Jellyfish are invertebrates. I am a cold-blooded eel. My slimy, snake-like body is covered in scales and hides my backbone from view. I have gills and fins and I lay my eggs in the water where I live. Am I a fish? Mm, yes, I am a fish. <laughs> Okay, I am a seahorse. My long body is encased in bony rings. I breathe with gills, and my fins help me glide through the water. I am the male, and I carry the eggs in my pouch until they are ready to hatch. Oh, seahorses, so cute. Yes, I am a fish. I am a whale, one of the largest animals in the sea. I breathe with lungs, give birth to live babies. Even though I'm not covered in hair, I do have a few bristles of hair here and there on my head. Am I a fish? Mm. Nope. <laughs> no, I am not a fish. But I am a vertebrate. I am a mammal. Whales are mammals. Excellent. Sorting aquatic creatures is not as easy as it looks, is it? Next time, things will be even more interesting as we learn about some aquatic animals that can live on land as well. How do you think they can do that? Hmm. You'll find out the more next time we meet. Alright, I threw this chart in here, boys and girls, so that we can just review again that living things are broken down into kingdoms, phylums, classes, orders, families, Genius and species. At the bottom is the house cat, of which my two house cats are battling it out in the background over there, so ignore the claw marks running around. Okay, good. Pay attention to this chart. You want to remember it. What does aquatic mean? Remember, pause between questions to answer because I'm going to keep flowing through this. What does aquatic mean? means having to do with the water. Just remember Aquaman, okay? Come on now. That was lovely. In what sort of aquatic habitats do fish live? Hmm. Fish live in freshwater lakes and rivers, streams, ponds, or saltwater. Some fish can live both freshwater and saltwater. What is a fish doing when it spawns? Hmm. Laying eggs, some of which become fertilized during the reproduction process. Describe the function of the respiratory organs of a fish. Hmm. Feel free to write these questions and your answers down, too. I mean, you probably should. In your notes. No taking support. <laughs> ah, they help fish breathe oxygen. Very good. Name the organ that allows fish to breathe underwater, similar to the way lungs help humans breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Nemo, one of the characters in the tank is named that too, isn't it? Gill. <laughs> fish use their gills to take oxygen from the water. Very good. They use their gills to take oxygen in from the water. Why are scales an important physical characteristic of fish? Well, they offer protection to help them move through water. 
How do fish move through the water? Mm -hmm. They use their fins and tails. Say you and a friend are discussing whether or not a shark is a fish. How would you convince your friend that a shark is a fish? Hmm. 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 Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot right there. Like other fish, sharks live in water and have gills through which they take in oxygen. They have scaly skin. Their tails and fins help them move through the water. Very good. <clears throat> in your classification journal, write the word fish at the top of a clean page. Now write two or three complete sentences which describe characteristics of groups of animals called fish. You can definitely list vertebrate, cold-blooded, they live in water, have scales, gills, fins, reproduce by laying eggs, etc. I'm going to ask you a question, give you a minute to think about the question. You'll turn to your neighbor in class or someone and discuss it. Then we will have people share out in class. If you're telling someone about fish, would you say there's a large number of fish in the world or a small number of fish in the world? Explain your answer. Give you a chance to think about that and we'll share. If fish live everywhere, there is water. There are many, many fish in the world because most of the earth is covered by water. Remember, three quarters. There are fish in both salt water and fresh water. A lot of water. We read the question you wrote on an index card before the read aloud. A few volunteers will share their questions and we'll get answers. For students who may not have received answers to their questions, I'll ask you to circle the question or we may write it on the board. You may want to have those. That's, that's me. I'm, I may check mark those who have questions and we'll continue to keep those questions in index cards classified, tucked away in our classification journals. And also, you may find the answer later in another read aloud. So that's always good. Questions are always important, even if we do not know the answers right away. That's part of science, is, make, is having questions. <laughs> All right. Word for this lesson is aquatic. In the read aloud, you heard Rattenborough say, Today I'm going to teach you a little more about aquatic species of animals that are classified as fish. Aquatic means having to do with water. Eli visited a pet store every weekend because he loved to watch the turtles swimming and playing in their aquatic environment. Have you ever seen something that was aquatic? Where were you? Would you consider yourself to be aquatic? What aquatic activities do you do? Be sure to use the word aquatic when you tell about it. So in class, we'll ask a, couple, we'll ask a few students to share out. And of course, using the phrase aquatic in your sentence. If you're doing this as homework, you can, or in your note, notepad or journal, write out the answers to the questions about being aquatic, being sure to use the word aquatic when you answer the questions. Okay, this will be fun. This is an in-class activity, or you can feel free to ask a friend while doing this slideshow. I'm going to say a phrase that describes something that is aquatic or not aquatic. If the phrase is something that is aquatic, you say that is aquatic. If the phrase is not something aquatic, you say that is not aquatic. A monkey swinging from the branch to branch in the jungle. Is that aquatic? Do, 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 do. That is not aquatic. <laughs> Breaking leaves in the yard, aquatic? Mm, not aquatic. Swimming in the lake, is that aquatic? Do, 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 do. That is aquatic. Walking to the cafeteria? Who, golly, I would say... Nope. That's not aquatic. A dolphin jumping and diving in the waters? Or in the waves? That is aquatic. A huge tank of ocean animals in the aquarium? Is that aquatic? That is aquatic. Doing cartwheels and flips on the trampoline? You're right. That is definitely aquatic. <laughs> okay, explain that you'll, okay. I'm gonna use a phrase, raise your hand if, and you will add a phrase 
about the characteristics of fish. I'm going to say raise your hand if, okay? Fish are warm-blooded. Fish have backbones. Are fish warm-blooded? No one's raising their hand. Good. Do fish have backbones? If you raise your hand, good job. Remember, um, we did discuss pattern breakers, but we're not going to be including that in this list. The habitat fish lives are li live. <laughs> the habitats fish live in are aquatic. Good job. Fish breathe oxygen and water using gills. Raise your hand if that's true. Good job. Fish have feathers. Oh goodness, I hope you didn't raise your hand for that. Fish have scales. Yes, they do. Heidi. So in this box, you will fill out or do this on another piece of paper. If you don't have this paper in front of you, fill out the type of animal fish. And in all of those boxes around it, you will write characteristics about fish. For example, cold blooded and other things that we discussed. Very good. Now in your listening journal for this domain, I hope you were filling this out in class. If not, go ahead and do it now. If you have this journal in front of you, you will answer fish are Cold-blooded? Good. Fish have... The habitats fish live in are... If you said aquatic, good. Fish breathe oxygen and water using their... gills. Fish have... You could say scales on their body. For that second question, fish have, feel free to put in what you think fish have that we talked about. All right, this is the end of this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you enjoy the next lesson. Thank you.